Spoiler alert, this video will contain spoilers from My Street and Minecraft Diaries. Please proceed with the knowledge that the situations of the roleplay will be mentioned. Hello everybody, my name is Hardy McSmarty and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day and I'm glad you've joined me today to discuss the Minecraft YouTuber known as Jess or Aphmau. Aphmau was a 32 year old Minecraft content creator who mainly makes content catered towards children. Her uploads have ranged from role plays and storytelling to mini games, random games, and now modded Minecraft videos. The appearance of these videos also has transitioned from detailed unique thumbnails to clickbait Minecraft videos. Which of course brings in the views. This style really gives me unspeakable gaming vibes, honestly. Anyway, while I will be addressing Aphmau's content today, I plan to center this video around the problematic hiss of Aphmau. This video will be broken up into Jess's faults and content changes. And of course, I don't hate Jess. I've been a longtime fan since Diaries. I followed my street like it was my lifeline in middle school. She's someone who has influenced my dreams to become a content creator, and I know I've made some tutorials on similar ways to mimic her 3D models as well. Overall, I don't have issues with her, but she is problematic, and as a kid, I wish I had known better. Problems Everybody has their share of faults and problems. While I enjoyed Aphmau growing up, it's come to light that she's been more problematic than I genuinely understood. Jess has been accused of men love men baiting, queer baiting, in real life shipping of friends who were not comfortable, treating workers awful, which is alleged, stereotyping characters, age gaps in her series, incest, within role plays, being a Mary Sue, and has had a majority of male characters shift with her in some way, but she then settles for a mainstream relationship. I'll be diving into these now. Let's begin. Throughout some of the content Aphmau has produced, there are jokes about male characters being together, accidental kissing scenes, and fetishizing the idea of male characters being together. Example, Lawrence and Gareth, or Travis and Zane. These ships were also brought into the workplace. Jess was shipping her co-workers and they were not comfortable with this. I wouldn't be either, personally, especially when you're an actor or voiced actor playing a character you don't have creative control over because of script work. I'm unaware if they were able to turn down these situations when it came to recordings or if they were contracted to comply. While I'm unaware, I believe they would agree in order to keep the connection between boss and employee stable and secure their job. This is an issue because it also ties into queer baiting. For example, I'd like to analyze Caitlin and Luca. Caitlin and Luca were in a relationship at Falcon Claw University, which was a series placed between Phoenix Drop Days and My Street's timeline. Caitlin and Luca date during the season, but in Phoenix Drop High and Phoenix Drop Days, Caitlin is dating and is on and off with Jeffrey, and later she dates Travis. While she could be bi or pan or another sexuality who is attracted to males, females, and others, this isn't exactly explained. In a, in a sense, this could be viewed as baiting because not enough plot is explained. Apparently, Travis is also confirmed to be attracted to males and females. My source for the character's sexualities is an Aphma wiki. These are not expressed by Jess herself, so take it with a pinch of salt. Also, with this one, I wouldn't directly blame Jess for the man love man stuff because it's about how people view the interactions of characters, but it could be implied. Ship baiting. I genuinely remember middle school when a friend and I were arguing about who Aphmau would be with in Diaries. Me, I was a fan of Larmau and she was a Garmau fan. Ugh. Now, if you didn't watch Diaries back then, that's fine. But there was lots of shipping between Aphmau and male characters in the series. I was convinced Lawrence and Gara, generally because they were characters that Aphmau knew and had been with in the story for a decent time. And then Aaron showed up. Aaron is voiced and played by Jason, Jessica's husband. So now, all of us who were just sitting here waiting for Lawrence and Garth to sweep Aphmau off their feet, nope, Armau wins. Like, this wasn't an issue for me because Aaron was pretty hot, but still, to those who weren't on board, I can imagine it was annoying and underwhelming. While you're a kid who was heavily invested into watching Aphmau's series, and the canon Armau ship is always present, it really sucked. Jess's obsession with shipping in her roleplays was a bit cringy, I'd say, like she shipped everyone and everything. There's also Ian Mao, but we're not there just yet. Mary Sue. Now I wanted to talk about Aphmau as a character, not Jess, Aphmau. When Diaries first started, her character was meant to represent someone who had a village fall into her hands and had to do her best to make the village flourish throughout the season. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. 
Now you drop Aph Mao into a high school or modern day setting and she's a Mary Sue. Aph Mao was often flirted with by every guy who approached her and she made it like it wasn't a common thing. Like Aph Mao wasn't shipped with every male character in the My Street universe. Mary Sue's are fictional characters who come off as perfect or flawless. Now I know I described Aph Mao as a heroine in diaries, however Mary Sue can still be somebody with power and strength, but who still lacks a backstory or genuine personality. If I could define Aph Mao as a character, it would be loud, popular, and oblivious. She's constantly the main character and center of attention. Most storylines revolve around or include her, and she doesn't pick up on certain things or understand the circumstances of a situation. Think of it as like a dumb blonde scenario. Girl everyone likes, lots of friends, always involved in stuff, but is not fully capable of understanding her surroundings or situations. Treatment of workers. In 2018, there was some drama about Blue Jay Studios, Af Mao and Jason's company. Because workers of the head office had been fired randomly and the audience didn't really know why. Miss Dan spoke out about this, but I was unable to find his tweet since it had been deleted. However, I remember when this went down and it was a shock to the community. I'm not 100% sure if this was correct, but I believe it was something to do with Jason and there was a falling out between staff members. And people who worked at Blue Jay Studios were friends of Jess. They collaborated, they worked together lots. There has been talk throughout the years of how Jess doesn't treat her coworkers very well, and that the offices were a toxic place at times. This can be understood with any workplace. However, firing a bunch of your friends is kind of odd. Not cool. I mentioned earlier that Jess liked to ship people in the office as well. Again, not cool. It sucks that people were uncomfortable in what was supposed to be an enjoyable working environment. Nonetheless, I can't confirm nor deny this fully because I didn't work at Blue Jay. So, moving on. Kawaii Chan. Right, everybody, let's discuss Kawaii Chan, a close friend of Aphmos throughout the alternate universes. Kawaii Chan started out as a Yandere character who shipped Aaron and Aphmau. She had a shrine in her basement and everything. While I enjoyed Casey as a character, she's heavily stereotyped. <laughs> if you didn't pick up on it, she's meant to be a bubbly, shy Japanese girl. Japanese in quotations because the race of the Aphmau universe is Mifa. However, the fact that her name is Kawaii Chan, she's a cat girl with a high pitched voice, and uh, it just it doesn't look too good. <laughs> Some people may find this offensive or not in regards to your own ethnicity, of course. However, she's meant to portray an anime girl type, and I'm not sure how to feel about that. Her real name is Nana, but she still tells people it's Kawaii Chan. If I remember correctly, Zane is the only one who calls her Nana. Anyway, I enjoyed Casey as a character and I loved her appearance, but the fact that her entire personality is still based around the Kawaii mod from Diaries is kind of disappointing. Age gaps in Phoenix Drop High. Transitioning to Phoenix Drop High, Aphmau begins the season as a freshman in high school. She is 15 at this point. Her and Aaron aren't officially a thing, but there is romantic tension. He is a senior who was held back. He is 18. 15. 18. Y'all catch the issue, right? The age gap is bad, and it's sort of gross that they had romanticized the characters when Aaron was a literal adult. Oh, not to mention they were online friends. He was an 18-year-old playing games with a 15-year-old. Well, anyway, we aren't here to villainize Aaron, but um, still, like, who took this into account? Like, who read the script saw, oh, age gap, minor and adult? Check, our monetization should be fine. Like, man, it hurts my brain. This is pretty much the only season it matters because they get together in My Street Season 1, but still it makes me sort of uncomfy. And when we were kids, like, I would never have saw this as weird. If anything, it made it seem okay because it was half now. Like, it's horrible. Half of the things I know now make me annoyed because I didn't understand when I was younger that everything she did wasn't the best. It says, well, it's what you've all been waiting for, folks. After the discussion of the age gap in Phoenix Drop High, we're going to talk about Ian, a character who is obsessed with being with Aphmau, who shipped with her and is also the villain in Emerald Secret, Phoenix Drop High, and Starlight. I remember people really liking Ian. He was a big deal in the Armal Love Triangle, especially in Emerald Seeker when he used Aphmau against Aaron and Phoenix Drop High. Anyway, this Ian Mao vs. Armal thing went on till Starlight, when we get some insight about Aphmau's father, Zack who also isn't a good guy. Oh, and guess what? Apparently Ian is Avmo's half-brother, possibly. So now, for seasons, there has been a ship between siblings. 
Why did this happen? Oh, because Jason didn't like people shipping them anymore. Because he only wanted them to ship our map. So, they made Ian and Aphmau siblings, even though Ian literally loved Aphmau romantically. Like what? Hello? Again, this is an allegation. Maybe it was a plot hole, but they normally do decent with those, so it doesn't really make sense for them to not have picked it up, you know? Content. It's a shame her content has changed so much over the years. I know people genuinely miss her roleplays and storytelling, and aren't into her newer content. Her content makes more views, more than it used to honestly, and that's great for her. But it feels like less spirit is put into these newer videos. Less of her creativity that we all loved. Uh, that and I miss her vlog type videos, I really like those. I guess she's a mother, she's busy, she's running a 12 million plus subscribe to channel, and they only have so much time on their hands. However, I feel like we've gone from watching a content creator to a TV show host. But that's just how I feel. I probably won't watch her content regularly like I used to, which is a shame because she was a huge idol to me. Like, this channel began as a Minecraft roleplay channel. That's what I wanted it to be, because of her. But if she's able to help the younger generation and younger kids become inspired to create their own content, then that's good by me. With all that said, thank you all for tuning into this video. I'm not here to ruin anybody's childhood. Please don't find offense in this video. You can choose to support Jess or not, it really means nothing to me. But I did want to discuss some things related to her and her content. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'd love to hear what you guys think of all this in the comments, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.